Now, look, I'll be the first to admit that the witch trials got a little out of hand, but I'm pretty sure they were started with the best of intentions. When someone, through either no fault of their own having a witch bloodline, um, potentially very far back, or someone who has actively chosen that they're going to be evil, and they allow as much witch entities and energy to possess them as possible, they begin to make the energy of an area incredibly dense and nasty, which can cause mental and physical health problems in both people and animals and cause crops to die, leading to a famine. So, at that point, if the villagers of the local area have spoken to the possessed uh, witch, they've told them that they need to <laughs> stop cursing everyone and destroying the lives of all of those around them. And the witch says, no. Or she says, oh, well, of course, darling, whatever you say. And then immediately goes back to cursing the entire village. It does get to a point where the only real solution they could see, and it is a real solution, is to go and hunt down all the witches in the local area. Now, the problem is that once society has agreed that it is okay to go and kill witches for the greater good, of course, only the most evil ones to start with, and then as they see that the energy of the areas actually do begin to lift, the physical health problems, cancers, major illnesses they were having, major anxiety issues do gradually ease up as they're no longer being constantly cursed by witch energy, well then the goalposts do start to get moved, it does make sense, and people start thinking, yeah, we're way better off without those witches. And then, you know, they begin to think, well, my sister-in-law, you know, the, the world may be better off without her, she could be a witch, and then it's a pretty slippery slope from there. But the extreme case of people going around and murdering witches does make sense if you have actually experienced witch energy yourself. Witch energy is very heinous and can cause major issues. Witch energy looks like yellow, viscous excrement and urine mixed, mixed together. It mainly smells like old, very old style urine and it causes major issues. Um, a few of the major ones I've written down it can cause premature rapid aging due to your life force being stolen, either by someone who is possessed by witch entities and letting them work through them, or just by witch entities themselves targeting you. Over time, you can begin to look like a witch as those witch entities and witch energies are getting into your energy field and beginning to hybridize and with the end goal of possessing you, so your physical features do tend to change. It usually causes either bloating or anorexia. Um, the bloating is not something you can help other than clearing it. The anorexia usually comes from you feeling physically ill just at the overall thought of food. It causes self-hatred and major anxiety issues. It causes overall mainly like arthritis, physical joint problems. Uh, mentally, it wants to slow you down. It will cause personality switching. This is usually, if you're just being hit by witch energy, not an issue, but if you've got a lot of witch energy, you'll begin to essentially start getting major thoughts that aren't yours. And if you're conscious and aware of your thoughts enough, you'll say, hey, that's not me. But if you're not, and you begin to act on these often extreme emotions that witch energy is giving you, it can become quite a problem. Now, if you do have witch energy, it's usually not your fault. You've either, like me, have had witches some, somewhere back in your bloodline, which is affecting you, or you've got witch energies or someone possessed by witch energies in your surroundings, and they're just bombarding the entire neighborhood with witch energy, causing you to get it that way. The important thing is acknowledging that you've got this and trying to stay as clear-minded and level-headed as, as possible. If you have a lot of witch energy on you, this video will cause a very, very annoying purge. Your emotions will be all over the place, but know that that is not your emotions, that is witch energy 
playing through your emotional body, playing through your mind, playing through your nervous system, and once you're clear of it, you'll be significantly better off. Now, if you're someone who is really, really covenant witch energy, you've got pretty much full blown witch possession, it's best that you don't just try and, you know, loop this as much as you can. Play it until you're like really jittery and then <laughs> take a break. Witch energy is often mistaken, or I wouldn't even say mistaken, I'd say it's very, very similar to succubus energy. I won't explain what succubus energy looks like right now because I, I don't feel I need to but anyone who has witch energy in their energy field will be attracted to others with witch energy now if someone is completely possessed by witch energy it will have usually been a gradual process they will have started off as a regular person and they will have chosen to listen to the negative thoughts, chosen to do the wrong thing, and gradually allowed it to overtake them. People with witch energy that are really covered in it will usually end up having narcissistic psychopathic traits, and even if they're attracted to other people with witch energy, they'll often be best friends with them for about three months, then they'll have a very minor <laughs> disagreement, and then because they're both narcissistic psychopaths, they very quickly fall out and they're now each other's like arch enemies and they're throwing curses at each other. And it may not even be conscious curses. If you have a lot of witch energy, and you can know nothing about energy, but if you just sit there and you're just mumbling in a trance, you're cursing someone, right? You're not, you don't literally have a wand or, you know, you're doing witchcraft, but if you're just mumbling and mumbling and, you know, you're just focusing on this person all the time, all that witch energy you have is being directed at them. So it's very common for witch energy people to end up hating each other very quickly but unfortunately if you are not someone with an extreme amount of witch energy if you are just someone who has some witch energy in your bloodline or you're someone who's picked it up from somewhere else then you'll be attracted to someone with witch energy and this now fortunately i've not seen this myself i'll clarify that this is not me uh revealing my own personal love life right this is how people with witch energy relationships tend to go they'll be attracted to someone on site and now that, that's a major red flag. If you're attracted to someone on site, question that thoroughly. And if someone is covered in witch energy, they'll often be a terrific partner for about two months. And then one day you'll, that you may make an offhand comment. You may make, not even an offhand comment, something that makes complete sense, but they just take it their own way and like they literally energetically will have a switch inside of them and it will flip. And then suddenly the witch Consciousness, usually powered from an artificial soul, will come forward and whoever your partner was at that time is now no longer your partner. That is now a witch running their body and they will just loop and loop and loop on whatever you've said and the energy from what um, they're looping will get worse and worse and more heinous and you'll often end up with a headache that just gets worse as they loop it. And you'll think, oh, well, that was terrible. I'll make sure that I never make mention that one thing and that this is common for abusive relationships you think oh there's that one thing i can't do no it's it's not it's not what you've done it's, this person is insane right anyway so if that happens okay the first time you might be able to justify it but the, the second or third time no you have to end that relationship and a, a lot of people the They'll end up married to someone like their mum and they'll hate their mum. They're like, how did this happen? I've ended up married to my mum. She wasn't anything like my mum. And now we're married for six months and she's my mum. And I can't stand her. And that, that's very common because if, for example, my mum has a lot of witch energy. A lot. It's bloodline related. My mum does, she doesn't know anything about spirituality at all. Whatever's running her has no interest in energy or spirituality whatsoever. Not that I've ever made any attempt to explain it to her, but even as a child, it was pretty clear there was, there was no reason to try and explain it. So for me, having had a mum with witch bloodline energy, and then probably, well not probably, then having relatives from her side with witch energy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then back it goes all the way to Xerxes, and then probably further from there, that means that I had an innate attraction to witch energy because they were trying to get me to marry someone who was going to be crazy, right? Or similar to my mum, which I definitely would not want. And 
with which energy it's much, much more common in women. Men will be attracted to it, but they won't usually really get possessed by which energy. The, I'd say, alternative for women would be marrying someone who's like their dad, who's got a lot of demonic energy, and that's very, very common as well, because it feels familiar. And if you're around an energy, especially if a parent, and uh, I bought the best SD card, well, not the best, I bought a very, very good SD card for my camera, put it in, it's supposed to work, no issue, and now my camera has stopped recording on its own. Like, <laughs> now it's stopped. Come on, start. There we are, right. This, that's not my fault, okay? I've, I've looked into all the software issues, the physical issues, everything should be working on here. Anyway, I'll just talk to my webcam whenever it does that. That's not a big issue. But it's very common that if you're around a family member and they have heinous energy, you really won't feel it because your energy has become so desensitized to it and they put so many, and this is their energy, not so much them consciously, hopefully, has put in various implants and other blockages for you to even be able to sense what's going on. And it's only when either you move out or if you have like a major energy clearing away from them, when your energy will begin to let you feel their energy. And if they've really, really got their claws in you, you may not even feel it then. Which is why a lot of people end up marrying people with the terrible negative energy traits of their parents. Can which energy cause random lazy eye? I don't, I don't know where that question came from, Clover. Could it? Yes. But a lot of energies could. That would be targeting your eyes and your energy body, which would be relating to your physical body. Which energy? Now, I'm not going to talk about what happens if you're targeted by either a witch entity, which is a, basically for anyone who's new to energy, that would be a, a ghost, pretty much. Just think of a ghost, but it's a witch, and it's made out of different energy to a ghost, in like the fifth dimension or someone who is physically possessed by witch energy. Now, they'll often target you and deliberately drain your life force and you're suddenly, and this can happen in, we've seen it in, in people in about 10 minutes where they just look like themselves and then they suddenly look like they haven't slept for four days. They look like they've aged 30 years. I've even seen it when I've just been walking around and you walk past one girl and her face is, I don't know, 19, and then it just, uh, as her mum's energy just, covers her as, as they're walking by, I guess just to mess with me, she suddenly now looks like she's 50. Just like very wrinkly, incredibly old. You're not a good 50, a very, very old 50. Which people with which energy, I wouldn't say they tend to live a long time, but they live in such a moment of self-hatred and most of the time that which alter ego is running them that even though they steal so much life force, when you live in such a, basically, toxic sense of self and just a state of chronic anxiety and chronic anger at, at oneself, you tend to age rapidly, no matter how much life force you're stealing. And they usually, unless they're stealing a lot of life force, don't live past 70. Now, even if, if they're at that point where they're stealing life force, it's not much hope for them. But if they're not at that point, if you're not at that point where you're chronic evil, but you're getting a lot of self-anger, a, um, a lot of self-hatred, that can be cleared. So long as you're not at the point where you've consciously made a decision to hand your body over to witch entities, and people do do this. They, they get to a point where they're so depressed, they're so suicidal, but they don't either have the, I'd say, the, the drive to kill themselves, which is fortunate, that's never a good idea, um, really ever, unless you're, you know, looking at being tortured for a long time, Th then it, it's, ex there are a few extreme cases, but overall, don't do that, but you, the main thing which entities want to do is get people to a state where they're so beat down that when they get a voice in their heads that says, you know, will you hand your body over to us, and they say yes, and then they do, and then their soul either gets pushed right down deep, and they just are, are, are pretty much are sleeping, fuel source for which energy, or it gets shoved out, but if they've agreed to it, they'll usually stay in their body, but they won't be running that body whatsoever anymore. And then without outside help or something 
major energetic changing, they're not going to get it back, nor would they most likely want it back if they're at that extreme point where they hand it over. People at that point are usually either very fat because the witch energy has absolutely destroyed their metabolism, and no matter what they eat, the, they could eat just broccoli forever, and the energy of it would be changed to sugar. So you think, oh, well, then if broccoli is just going to be sugar, can I just eat sugar? The answer is no, because if you just then switch entirely to sugar, it'll be like you've had 40 times that amount of sugar. It will be very, very damaging. So no, you, you can't just get an easy out because your vegetables are being changed to sugar, which is unfortunate. Or they'll be very anorexic and they'll have mental blockages that it's like they're not supposed to eat, that they either don't deserve to eat, or that if they're in a state of anxiety, it's that their food's poisoned. It can often be very extreme things, but if you look at that logically, it makes a lot of sense, but if you are looking at it with this incredible emotional extreme in your head, suddenly the logic doesn't you know, matter that much. Now, fortunately, with which energy, I've never had anything that extreme. I had my digestion targeted from my mum's bloodline energy, but yeah, I never experienced the anorexia, fortunately. I'll just have a look at the questions now. Cube says he's running four tabs of this video and he's feeling movement in, yeah, that would be which entities, or which entities freaking out in your field. Now, which entities, one of the main uh, tactics they have is to re remain unknown and um, announced. They don't want you to know they're there. So when something suddenly starts clearing them, it, it may take them a good 40 minutes to actually figure out what's going on because they aren't really prepared. They work so hard on cloaking that they aren't really prepared for an energetic fight. If your soul is deep down, does it get released when you die? Yes, it does get released from your physical body. However, you may get dragged off to a witch realm because they have no reason to let you go. But yes, it does get released from your body. Is there a correlation between witch people and psychedelics? No, witch energy is completely different to psychedelic energy. Witches may do psychedelics, but in general, no, there's no correlation. There's much more correlation between, say, voodoo and psychedelics than there is witch energy, but even that's n not that strong of a correlation. They're still completely different energies. Is witch energy in churches too? No, not unless you go to a pagan church <laughs> in the middle of nowhere that's um, got a lot of, you know, had witch entities or witch people working there in the past. No, there shouldn't be witch energy in churches. Yes, which energy tends to attack the digestive system as its main thing, especially the thyroid. It's the thyroid a lot. Just scrolling down my notes. I'll talk now about the physical effects of anxiety. This is not just to do with which energy, but it is very, very common. Energy tends to affect your mental state and emotional state that's fairly straightforward but and this wasn't something I, I think I didn't figure out till I was at least 18 is that your emotional state affects your physical state so I used to have a really weak bladder like and to the and it got significantly worse to the point that I thought my bladder was broken but no if you're in an incredibly anxious state Often subconsciously, physically, you feel like you always do, right? You're like, no, this is how I feel. Yes, my heart beats a bit faster than it's supposed to. And <laughs> you have a few other physical symptoms of anxiety. But you'll end up having an overall weaker body that just wants to escape wherever it is. And going to the bathroom is seen as a very, very simple form of escape. But it is a form of escape. And as you clear which energy and as you clear other repressed and stuck anxious energy your bladder and overall physical body tends to increase but the blood is a very very major one because now i can go 
I can go the whole day. <laughs> but um, I'm bragging right now, right? But it didn't used to be like that at all. It used to be if I was, say, playing a video game when I was 16. Yeah, I could go two hours because I wasn't really thinking of anything that was, you know, my, my mind and body were distracted. But if I wasn't distracted, no, I'd drink and have to go pretty much straight away. It's just how things work. But, so if you have a weak bladder, it's usually due to anxiety and not due to you physically having a weak bladder. If anyone has any questions about that, let me know. Is there any need for witchcraft? I, I've never used witchcraft. I'm talking more so about like, not modern witchcraft, but like ancient witch energy that's been around for a long time. Now, when I was clearing uh, the bloodline energy from my mom, I was saying, all right, well, where does this go back to? And as I tried to follow it back, I was following it back along the family tree just fine. And then I got to Xerxes. Now, if you have seen the movie 300, there is a villain and he's called Xerxes. And he is a god king emperor. Now, Xerxes was, was a real guy on earth, right? He's not just a character in 300. 300, it's, it's based off of reality. And now, did this guy you know, have superpowers? Probably not. And he definitely wasn't immortal because he's, he's still not walking around and he didn't die in the end of 300. I don't, I don't recall how he died. But this would have been somebody who was born, I'm going to say, with an insanely strong witch bloodline. And it, I'm feeling it was dormant for about five generations to him, but it just got stronger and stronger. And witch bloodlines do get stronger as time goes. They just, they either pick one host and boost them up and they'll feed off the other family members to power them. Or it, they'll just lie dormant and feed off everyone, everyone, everyone. And then nine generations later, ah, good, this this is one evil person. Let's empower her. And then they'll pick her and give her an energetic boost. But Xerxes, I believe, made a lot of packs with many Baphomet demons and pretty much everything. But the main thing that empowered him was witch energy. So wherever my bloodline is... After, before, I'd say before Xerxes, I have no idea because everybody's witch bloodline that was the past through Xerxes timeline is tied straight to Xerxes. And it would not shock me if Xerxes is running around as some kind of very evil witch ghost or I wouldn't say ghost is the right term but it, I'd be surprised if he's not I doubt he's reincarnated. With the amount of energy he had, even after death, he'd, he'd still be around. For sure. Can water healing video purge witch energy? Yeah, the water healing video can purge pretty much every energy that I know of. So yes, you can use it to purge uh, witch energy and most other energies I don't have a video for. Do you have to be remote viewing for this to work? No. Sounded like something just ran past me. That was weird. It's like a dog's collar. All right. That would be a hell or something running past my house. Fortunately, it's not in my house. My house is pretty well protected, so I'm not worried about anything barging in. Is it okay if I imagine myself as a mountain for waterfall with a lake at the top? And yeah, that's perfectly fine. So long as you're imagining water going through your body, you can make your body whatever it is so there's no issue there is hydroconia disorder caused by which energy it's a disorder that thanks to a bad illness and you check your body all the time no oh one thing so with the folklore that witches burn when you pour water on them that is accurate if you take well well water mainly or water out of a tap pretty much water that hasn't been sitting there any kind of ground water and you pour it on someone with witch possession it is going to burn them because they have so much witch energy in their body that having just any standard water poured over them will cause them to have a negative reaction because <laughs> it's affecting the witch energy. Now, they probably won't melt into a puddle unless you have like really, really supercharged water. But even then, it's, it's unlikely. But energetically, if the water was strong enough, yeah, they'd energetically melt. But the physical body shouldn't. At least I've, I've never seen it. <laughs> but water, yes, it is a natural candle to which is pretty much all negative energy. I can't think of any negative energy 
that isn't affected by water. So, I mean, it goes for everything. You know, vampires can't cross water. I think werewolves. Can werewolves swim? Anyway, energetically, werewolves can't swim. It affects them as well. One of the most positive energetic places in the world. At the moment, there's... That would be a very small list. Um, yeah, I won't... I won't drag this down by going into that. Is the moon and witchcraft connected? I would say witchcraft thought of ways to use the moon. The moon is an artificial planet and very, very negative. So, yes, it is certainly connected. If someone with witch energy showers, does it listen to witch energy? Yes, yes it does. But what you also see, and this doesn't just go for witch energy, but if someone has a lot of negative energy, they can shower, and then five minutes later, they, they just reek again. So if someone has a lot of rich energy, they'll always smell like really old urine. They, they just will. And they can shower for an hour, come out, and then they stink again. So gradually, as they choose to clear through their rich energy and they play this video, it will be seven minutes after the shower, and then ten. I have a brother, he always reeked of piss and sweat always he had a lot of demonic energy and then later on as his energy got worse and worse as his lifestyle got worse and as he I mean he always had he was, he was always pretty evil he started reeking of sulfur and he could shower and then 10 minutes later walk by and you go ah ah my nose it reeks of sulfur so yes people who are demonically possessed do reek of sulfur um but yeah which energy and as you train your energy, you, you may barely smell these things now, but as you train it, the things blocking your, let's say, physical receptors from smelling this energy will clear. And then, yeah, you'll be smelling this energy on people. It's a very common energy. It's, you know, you're very likely to come across it. What are ways that witches can cause misfortune to others? Have you had occurrences with them? I don't think I've ever had an energy battle with a witch. I've fought lots of witch entities. The main thing they do is target your metabolism, target your emotional and uh, yeah, pretty much emotional health, and age you massively. Those would be the main things. I've, I've fought a lot of witch entities, and I, but other than that bloodline energy, I, I don't really... I don't go around picking fights, and I don't see why someone with witch energy... So that would be very strong to... <laughs> it was a good idea to fight me. And then, then i just kick him in the teeth, and then probably the end of it. How do you clear that stench? Well, you have them shower a lot, and then you play this witch video a lot. Stefano Paris... Kiva asks, Lawrence, if you're clearing, but your entities always become unclear, never die, or new ones appear before you clear old ones, what do you do? I mean, you just keep at it. They essentially, negative entities, it's it's not like finding a person, right? You don't chop off one limb and then they've lost an arm and then the other, you know, the other arm and then both legs. No, you can chop off the arm and it will regrow and they will look almost unchanged. And the reason for that is because they're manifestations of negative energy. So they will look completely unchanged unless they're... I'll show that story in a moment, actually. But unless they're really strong, they'll be unchanged, 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 and then... And then they just don't exist. That's how they go. Now, there are negative entities that will build up enough strength, and they will physically manifest themselves in your surroundings. Right, that's fairly common. But then there are those that physically manifest themselves, and then they will shapeshift. And if you end up fighting or coming across a physically shapeshifting entity, those are really, really annoying. There was one night... I'm going to say 2019, probably in April. And no, it was the that the mass meditation that was happening. So anyway, there, there was a mass meditation, I think in February. So it happened shortly after that. Anyway, I think it was in April. And this entity showed up and it looked like a monkey about this big. And it was shape-shifting through all these shapes. I went, oh dear. And... That thing, I remember fighting it for most of that night, and then I, I needed to sleep. 
So I slept, woke up, and fought again the next day. And then it changed from a monkey into its actual shape. And once it's in its actual shape and it's not changing, that means it's lost enough negative energy, can't shapeshift anymore. And it was just this mummified face that sat outside my window. I fought that thing, I'm going to say, for like, you know, an hour or two each day on average. For like two and a half months. It took forever to die. And it had no self-preservation. Usually it'd be like, all right, I've shown up. I've, you know, shapeshifted. He wasn't scared. We fought. I'm losing. But he just wouldn't go away. And I ended up like grabbing parts of him and dropping him in the ocean. Took forever. So if it's physically shapeshifting, yeah, you're in trouble. But other than that, and that that's not in your mind. If it's physically shapeshifting and you're seeing it in your mind, that that's not an issue at all. That's really common. If it's physically there and it's shapeshifting, that's a good measure of strength that this is a problem. And then just play... What video would even clear that one? Probably the, the ghost video. Yeah, that was a ghost entity mainly. That would clear it probably in two minutes. Which would save you two and a half months. <laughs> I hated that entity. But other than that, no, there's not that much really to gauge strength other than how dense they are when they physically manifest and how long it takes you to erase them. If you clear a specific negative energy from yourself, is it normal for other people with that energy to cut you off and want nothing to do with you? Yeah, that, that's pretty common. <laughs> Especially for people with angels. People with angels really don't like it when they send their angels to you and th there are no angels anywhere. There's just... And then, you know, your shield erases them. Yeah, they, they tend to freak out at that point. But yeah, that is pretty common because they subconsciously have a fear of you. If we happen to fight an entity for a month, what happens if we lose? Well, you don't really lose. It's a battle of attrition. So as long as you don't stop, you win. They can be manifestations of energy from someone, such as a thought form, but most things on Earth are not thought forms. Most things are negative entities from other matrices that are here to feed off of humanity mainly. Can I play this video and sit the intention that it works on my neighbour who is a witch? <laughs> yes, you can. You know, maybe in the future when she's cleared up from witch energy she may thank you. But yeah, there's you can do that no problem and overall if you play a healing video and one reason why healing videos work really well negative entities really don't understand what a healing video is they never actually attack the energy of the healing video they may try and find out where the source is and they'll try and pause the video or um yeah that to stop but yeah they're not really and the way that these healing videos work is if you play one it makes a copy of the energy of the video, so you're not connecting to the direct source of the energy. You're getting a copy of that energy. So even if you got something that figured it out and they hit it, well, you know, they made it weaker and then the video restarts. <laughs> and they just wasted their time, uh, which is one reason why healing videos work much better than photos or like text or anything else because it does, you know, repeat and start over. I've written in my notes, I didn't write that much. Goes back to Xerxes. I, I don't know much to, <laughs> to say about Xerxes. But overall, throughout history, yes, there have been essentially like demigod rulers, Gilgamesh, Hercules. Hercules wasn't really a ruler. Xerxes, that they were physically on Earth. And they usually did have supernatural powers. Either mainly bloodline related a few of them could be soul based but uh, Xerxes was definitely just negative entity based you know he had a lot of dark rituals and you know a lot of energy harnessed which he then used to conquer Persia that's right I was going to make videos over 
Christmas. I guess I am. This is still the Christmas break. And then Christmas Eve, the Archdemons. Um, oh, and also, well, I say this. We remain calm because there's not much you can do about it. The Archdemons attacked essentially the, the energetic core, the consciousness of the planet, which usually looked like a green and blue ball. And now they attacked it Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is usually like a big day for like bad energy because a lot of that, you know, worshipping energy goes straight to reptilians. But I guess this time the Archdemons <laughs> siphoned a lot of that. And they have now targeted the core of the planet, the consciousness, and it's now just, then they hybridize it over hours, and it looks like an arch demon head. Is that permanent? Probably not, but it's, it's probably going to be like that for a while. So if you feel like somebody's hit your head in a car door, that's why, or if you're feeling fatigued, yeah, it's because you're feeling the Earth's energy <laughs> becoming way worse yet again. Um, there's not, not much more to say, say about that other than don't try and fix that. You'll get absolutely bodied and just, you know, be patient, keep training. That's pretty much it. When I started energy training, I'm uh, not energy training. When I started doing this as a job, I feel like I was fortunate timing wise. Because when I first started, there was no needleman energy, which now if you were to start doing this, uh, working on others, even, not even as a, a job, but just, you know, you shouldn't start as a job. You should start as a hobby, try and work on other people. But you have to be very careful for needleman energy now. That wasn't a thing when I was starting. And Archdemon energy is <laughs> way too much needleman energy. And a lot of people, uh, pretty much everyone, has Archdemon energy in their field just because they're on the entire planet. So now you have to watch out for that. just feels like it's, you know, as time goes by, that it gets harder and harder to do the beginning and I'd say middle stages of energy training. It's still certainly possible, but I'm glad I started when I did and I wasn't starting with the strength I had when I started with needlemen energy everywhere because that would have made everything, especially with the archdemons everywhere, would have made everything a lot harder. But then I'm sure if I started in, I don't know, like the 90s, when I was a child, it would have been easier than two, so perhaps that's just how this is, you know, when, whenever you start, the earlier it is, the easier it is. Do I plan to reopen session soon? Probably, probably, maybe tomorrow, I'll see. If we download the video for offline use, does it matter if we use audio or video only? It doesn't matter if you use audio. The video, the way it works is it, the energy comes off like the hard drive or um, solid state drive in your computer. And so long as that is playing, you can have the monitors off or the video minimized. You don't need to see the video, but so long as the video is actually playing from there, then it is working just fine. I'm not going to ask, uh, I mean, answer energy training questions that have nothing to do with what I teach. That's... Right, does anyone have any other questions about which energy or which entities? If I click the beginning of the video, does it restart the healing video? I don't really click the beginning. I, I put it on loop. Uh, I use loop tube or I have it downloaded and let it loop. It's so, okay, I'll just look at the energy. If you're 50 minutes in and you go back to zero. No, I believe that is still the same video. You need to pretty much click on the end. Okay, that stops it. And then if you hit zero or even 20, that should be a new video. I think, I think that's how it would work. How can you strengthen your connection to source energy? By energetically clearing your connection to source energy through you. I'll, I'll talk about this. So if you have witch energy, you 
will often get thought loops, and if you're talking with someone with Gen Z, they'll often thought loop on things. The most important thing is if you start getting a thought loop, especially about something absurd, realize that that's which energy forcing you to have that loop, right? You And if you consciously acknowledge that you are stuck in a loop, that you're not unfallible, and that they're messing with you, once you make the conscious effort and say, I'm not buying into that, and even if it loops for 10 minutes, know that the witches are burning their energy. They're just burning through their resources in order to mess with you. And so long as you don't give it any kind of emotional feedback and just ignore it entirely, they will get weaker over time before finally stopping altogether. What's the best way of destroying witch entities? <laughs> Same way. Same way as every other entity, you just use your energy and you manifest it on them and then you have it erase them. Is grounding yourself important? Y yes. It, it is. Correct. Do which energies also attack you outside the matrix? I wouldn't worry about... Which is not that high in the hierarchy in terms of, like, outside the matrix. So no, I, I wouldn't worry about that whatsoever. I wouldn't worry about anything outside the matrix while you're in here. Just, you know, train in here. I won't go into bloodline clearing, because if I do, and you have witch energy, it's going to go berserk, and you're not going to thank me for that. Can witch energy be placed on things in the house? Yes, that is a very good question, Ivan. I should have written that down. If, oh, all right, so let's say somebody who's got, who's possessed by witches, right? They're not there anymore. And they want to attack you. They will often give you a gift, and they may even, it doesn't have to be from them directly. Like they can order something online and like a pair of socks and have that sent to you, but they will energetically be like, this is a pair of socks. And once they've purchased a pair of socks, or even think about purchasing a pair of socks, energetically the curse they're creating has formed. And then they'll buy the pair of socks, they'll send it to you, and then you touch them, and that witch curse just pop, it's now blown up all over you, it's all over your arms, all over your legs, and you have to go and clear it. So if you get an item from a witch possessed person, try not to touch it. Definitely don't open it. That's the main thing that's usually triggered for cursed items is opening them out of the envelope. So if you go, oh, it's by this person who's possessed by witches, and then you bin it straight away. If they try and give you an object, and this is dealing with anyone who's possessed, just say, no, right? Just, I'm, I, I'm not taking this. I don't know you well enough, you, however you want to word it. I'm not taking anything from you. You're trying to curse me. No way, you're out of your mind. When you're dealing with possessed people, witches or anyone, it's very important you remain calm, know that you're not dealing with a person, you're dealing with an entity running this person, and that there's, there's no point getting angry, there's no point going, you're, you're blithering idiot, you know, and starting to strangle them. It's not going to get you anywhere. What you want to do is remain calm, know that this person is just an entity messing with you, right? It's not got, it's not capable of compassion or any kind of logical thought, just, aha, uh aha, -huh, aha, uh -huh, uh -huh, just... Agree to it, no, agree with it, but don't, don't agree to it, agree with it. And then, you know, don't, don't give it really any kind of emotion. And then try and limit your interactions with it. That's really the best things you can do with a possessed person. Don't let them touch you, because that is a way to transfer energy. But other than that, you know, there's no point in getting emotionally, like, annoyed about it, because it won't do any good. And that goes with negative entities as well. There's no point in really putting any emotion to it, even love it, no, just erase them, stay neutral. Yeah, there's no reason to really, you know, let them get to you emotionally. Do which entities usually ask permission before possessing someone like vampire entities? Yes, and then the obvious sense they'll get is no. And then they will just linger in their background for years and, you know, try and cause problems that way. Now that Call of the Planet is ruined, won't that make grounding bad? Well, no, because I never really, I, I, I never said connect to the core of the planet. I said connect to nature's energy. Nature's energy, I mean, it, the arch demons have a major, like, they make it much harder to connect to, so you're not, you're getting less. But no. Grounding is still perfectly fine using nature's energy, so there's no issue there. Oh, my hair's a mess. I meant to brush this before I started, and then my camera didn't work for a while. 
One thing, just in general, with targeting things like software just won't work. Things will just happen. You know, just remain calm and deal with it. Because again, getting like angry about it. My, my parents used to do this all the time. They get if they misplaced anything, they'd be screaming about it. Don't do that. That's moronic, right? If you do something, you go, oh dear, and then you go and look for it. Or and then you will go once finally you go, okay, I'm not going to misplace this object again. You make a mental note and you'll try and be better. So, you know, when I go to the live stream and the camera software just doesn't work and I'm unplugging it and replugging it and I'm trying everything, just double check it's still recording, that would be... It's... Oh no, it stopped recording. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, um, yeah, you just need to pretty much remain calm with anything that happens. Know that one of the main tactics in getting into is just messing with you. If they can get you in a state where you're like, oh no, the whole world's out to get me, everything always goes wrong, the, you've lost, right? You can't be in that state. Even if the whole world is out, again, is out to get you, you can't act like it is, right? You can't be in that mindset because it's not going to get you anywhere. Mexico Mexicano Squad says, what's another way I can train my energy besides waterfall technique? Most of the time I try doing it, my energy turns into a snake, even though I've played your shielding and Kundalini videos a lot. My printer's turned itself on. Okay, thank you, thank you, printer. Play the Kundalini video a lot if you're if you're just turning into a snake while you're doing it. Kundalini and demonic video. Yeah, if your energy is that out of control, you need to just have, it. you know, there are techniques you can do, but it would be significantly easier if you to just get clear of that first before, because you'll be frightened a lot trying to do anything fundamental. Does witch energy include psychics and tarot card readers? No, tarot card readers do not use witch energy. It only it, it includes people with bloodline witch energy and witch entities, which which are very very common. Which is why there's a video for it now. Let's stop recording. Ah, <laughs> why? Yeah, I looked up online and it said the SD card might have been too slow, so I've got a really, really good SD card in the now, and that's, that's not the issue. There, there is no reason for this. It's going to stop recording on its own. Can witches turn on computer devices or electronics? Witches, no. AI energy, yes. Aliens, yes. Witches don't usually mess with electronics much. Good. I think that's everything I had to talk about with energy. When it comes to bloodline energy, so long as you clear it from yourself and your own blood, you won't need to worry about any of your children having it. So you don't need to think, I need to go back all the way to the start of when this happened. No, you don't need to go back and, you know, <laughs> fight your ancestor energetically and, and clear that. You just need to clear it from you and then any descendants you have will not have it. Now, your siblings might, and you go, oh, well, my, my siblings need to energy train. You know, a lot of people just, just won't. It's as simple as that. But, you know, you can't make them. Yes, you can play the video for them. Yes, they can have purging effects and be stuck on the toilet. film. <laughs> and it will help them. But in, in general, when it comes to bloodline things, you know, just mainly focus on your own. You can't save everybody. And not everybody's worth saving. Is there a witch realm that they connect to? I've not, not actually looked. I would say, yes, there would be, similar to hell, there'd be like witch, pretty much witch hell for sure. And they would 
be able to connect to there and siphon a lot of witch energy from there. So yes, definitely. This mold connects to witch energy. Mold is usually plague energy. However, witches tend to cause plagues and they tend to make the area of the energy of Neri much worse, so they can cause it. But usually it mainly cause mental and physical problems rather than mold. Can I do an element screen video? What do you mean? Can witch energy transfer from past lives? Yes, you definitely can. Bloodline witch energy unlikely if you're just unfortunate to be born into a witch bloodline and you don't do anything to feed it through a lifetime. It's unlikely to carry over. But if you do feed into it or if you have been targeted by a lot of witch energy or if you were a witch, but, uh, you know, hopefully not. But, yeah, if you were targeted by a lot of witch energy, yes, it will transfer over. Does witch energy affect the mouth and voice too? A lot of negative energy tends to affect the mouth and voice. I wouldn't say witch energy really does. It's, I mean, it'll make you like hoarse. People with demonic energy, they, they tend to get like really, really like demonic sounding voices. I wouldn't even say deep, just, just demonic sounding. But witch energy, no. Do which entities get along with other entities? I'd say no, not at all. No. <laughs> which entities, just like when they're possessing someone, they're very narcissistic. So they'll be annoyed that there are demons and things in their way. They won't attack them, usually, but they will, because pretty much everything doesn't waste energy attacking each other. But I wouldn't say they get on with them. Can I please do entity cords and implant removal video again as it's been years since the previous one? I don't remember even making a cords removal video. I know I did one for entities and implants. But yes, that is on the list. I have quite a few things on the list. And as long as I have the, I'd say, energetic stamina and the mental stamina to make these, then I will make them, yes. All right, everyone, have a good evening or night, 10 p.m. now.